this video I'm going to demonstrate in slow motion how to cast on to multiple DPNs and I'm shooting this video because if all goes well next week I'm releasing a video uh, demonstrating how to work knitted knockers going through the techniques in those or maybe you're here because I've already you're in the future and I've already released that video and you came back here because I linked to this video Okay, you live in the future, I'm here in the past, and I want to have this video out because I think um, even though we're doing the bottom-up knitted knockers, I think that that's going to be the part that people find the most difficult is actually getting stitches on the needles. It's not hard though, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm starting off with a slip knot, and here we go slow-mo. I was going to give you a link to my slow motion slip knot video, but it hardly seems necessary. <laughs> Slide the needle into the slip knot and pull on both ends to tighten it up. That is our first stitch cast on. I have the tail end. I left myself enough yarn and I have the tail end in my left hand. This is how I always cast on, using the long tail cast on thumb method. And so at this point with just one needle, this is a regular thumb cast on. Wrap it around the thumb, put the needle in that loop. Then wrap the needle with the working yarn. Flip that loop over the top and tighten up. And you wanna make sure that each stitch has nice tension on the needle before you move on to the next one. For the knitted knockers, we're, knock, we're knocking on, we're casting on five stitches to each needle. That's five on the first needle. Now I'm going to work it up like I'm gonna cast onto the same needle but instead, I grab the second needle. And just like I did with the last needle, but with an empty needle this time, I slide it into the loop on my thumb. Everything else from here is exactly the same. Wrap the needle, pop that loop over the top of the needle. And make sure you get it, this stitch, the first stitch of the next needle good and tight. That'll prevent a gap between the needles. And we're back to just a regular cast on. I suppose the only difference now is there's another needle flopping around. I could mention this also. I should have probably said it in the intro. You can cast all 15 stitches onto one needle and then just slide them over to the other needles if you prefer. But if you get good at casting on this way, it is a bit easier and there is no chance of dropping a stitch while you're transferring stitches. Especially cast on stitches because it means you just have to start over. Whoopsie, I split that stitch, but I know I did. Mm -hmm. 
split a stitch again. Uh, the tail end of the yarn in a long tail cast on starts to untwist itself. It's good to drop the yarn every few stitches and let the yarn twist itself back up because when it untwists, it's easier to split a stitch. Okay, now we're back to five stitches on the needle. I'm ready to bring in another needle. I set it up by wrapping my thumb just like I'm going to cast onto that same needle, but I put an empty needle in my right hand. Slide that needle up into the loop. Wrap the needle and pop the loop over the top of the needle. And then just like we did last time, because this is the first stitch on a new needle, make sure you really tighten up that stitch by pulling on both strands. Lots flopping around here, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish casting on and then work a few stitches to show you how to join in the round as well. Whoops. Let's try that one again. It's funny, when I actually shoot the slow-mo videos, I my hands are working in at normal speed. And so dropping the yarn a little bit like that is just a quick little nothing, but in slow motion, <laughs> it seems like it takes forever to recover from dropping the yarn. Okay, that is... This here is 15 stitches cast on, five on each needle. And now when I knit the first stitch, I'm getting myself set up here to knit the first stitch and that will join it in the round so that I'm knitting in a little tube. I'm just pulling all the stitches to the middle of the needle so nothing's gonna jump off. Make sure your working yarn is distinguished from your tail end so you don't start knitting with the tail end. I like to pull my working yarn kind of on top of my work. I'm not actually sure what I'm doing here. Oh, now <laughs> I like um, I like my first needle to be under the second needle. Just an adjustment I always make. So the working yarn is coming from the last stitch that I cast on and the very first stitch that we cast on, the slip knot stitch, that's our first stitch. I'm gonna put my needle in that first stitch, the cast on, uh, the slip knot, as a regular knit stitch. And the slip, slip knot is always tighter than other stitches. 
sorry, that's a bit off camera, wrap the needle. And pull that stitch through. And now it is joined in the round. And I can just knit across these other stitches. Don't get frustrated with the first round you work after casting on, especially with double pointed needles, because everything's flopping around and the cast on row is always tight. There we are, full motion. regular speed. There we are, joined in the round. And that is it. I hope that helps get you started. Now you can jump back over to the Knitted Knockers video if it's out. <laughs> you future people. I still have to shoot that video. I hope that helps. Good luck.